Hello, my name is Stuart Keeler, and I'm going to be talking about the work hardening exponent, the n value. What I have here on the screen is a series of gradients which have been measured from a hemispherical dome being forced by a hemispherical punch. And you can see where the metal comes up and has the two gradients in here and then down. And that this is an end value of 0.2, which is capable of generally the mild steels that we're using today. Now, if we go to an end value of 0.25, which is better for the material because a high end value is indicative of a better stretchability capability, we see that we have a less of a gradient and more of a distribution of the, dis, uh, the deformation out here. 0.25 would be a vacuum de gas interstitial free steel. Now we go to an extreme here, 0.35 and 0.45, which happen to be stainless steel grades, austenitic stainless steel. And here, the end value says, I'm going to work hard and so hard, so fast during the deformation that I'm not going to let it occur at this high strain area at the top of the dome. I'm going to force this deformation way out here to areas that are not getting the deformation before. And so the end value actually brings it down from a peak down to here. High strength of oil steel is that as the strength of the material increases, the end value goes down. And so if you have an HSLA steel, you would have maybe a 0.15 or so, and now the gradients get worse. And so that, that is what happens when the normal steels we're working with today uh, have this problem. What we're talking about now is the advanced high strength steels, which are basically designed in two ways. One of them is to say, for a constant yield strength, we can increase the formability of the material. In this case, the total elongation, but it can also be the end value. So these steels, the H advanced high strength steels, are designed to give you more stretchability with the same strength. So here's the HSLA that we are commonly with. Um, and now here's the dual phase, which I'll talk about. And then even better is the trip. So for basically a 500 MPA, the HSLA averages uh, in here about 15 to 20. The dual phase up to 20, the trip is up into 25% elongation. Now, how do they do that? Well, the metallurgists have had only ferrite as a, mark, as a microstructure to work with for years and years. And this is, they've tried all sorts of things, substitutional, um, and, um, other uh, ways of doing it, grain size, etc. But now they have said we're going to change the microstructure by adding phases other than ferrite. And in this case, we have martensite particles in here, about 10%. And what these martensite particles do is to cause a lot of deformation at the intersection between the martensite particle and the ferrite uh, grain over here. For the metallurgists, they say this is the site of increased dislocations. Dislocations mean more end value. The dislocations are the, the, the cause of the end value and that they are good. And so now what we have is martensite in here, about 10%, and the rest of this remains as ferrite. Well, now if we do a 
stress-strain curves of these materials, both the HSLA or this, which is the dual phase, the ferritic and martensite uh, microstructure, we then have to change from our normal n-value per measurement procedures from a static n-value to a dynamic n-value or instantaneous n-value. Because when you start to deform these advanced high-strength steels, the properties change as you start the deformation, which in this case is very good. So here we have two stress-strain curves, um, which are the engineering curve here, and the N value here has replaced the stress. So you might call it the N strain curve, if you will. We prefer to call it an instantaneous N value because we have plotted the N value for every little increment of strain that is coming through. Again, these are in tensile samples. So here's your HSLA 50, um, uh, 350, which is a 50,000 yield strength deal. And uh, we have a rather flat type of N value. It comes up very early on and it flattens itself out and that's what we have. Now here's your dual phase, which is also a 50 KSI, same strength, but it starts out very strongly early on to a higher value of N. So at about 3% deformation, instead of having an end value of about 0 0.12, 0 0.13, they actually go up to a value of 0 0.2. That's enough to have a restriction of any gradients. Like I showed you before, the end value is ready where you get, a, again, a high stress area let's say a character line or something, on that area where it wants to try to localize the strain, the dual phase says no. As soon as you start to deform, the end value goes up and I'm not going to let you strain. And so it knocks down these gradients. Now the confusion is with the dual phase steel is that it is done working at about 8%. And then it becomes similar or even identical to its mate, the HSLA 50 strength. Now, one of the things to show that, that what this does is here is a set of gradients which came from a study of steel bumpers that was done some time ago and you can see these real sharp gradients, the dual phase steel just says, okay, I'm not going to pay any attention. I'm gonna do my work. I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna knock these gradients down. And that's what its specialty is when you do your metal forming. Now, unfortunately, when you are in the end of the value measurement range, which is from 10 to 20, these two steels will have the same end value. And so you look at it and says, well, the dual phase does no more than uh, HSLA. Why shall I use it? Well, it's because it's done its job already. And now it's resting. And now the other th thing that happens is that the terminal end value, which determines the height of the forming limit curve, is out here. Again, the end value is identical. And so your heights of your forming limit curves are gonna be the same. And that is shown here. Here's your mild steel. Uh, by the way, end value controls the height of this curve here, FLC sub zero. The higher the end value, the higher the curve. And I'm not gonna go into what the forming limit curves tell you, but higher is better. So here we have a 40 uh, FLC sub zero for your mild steel. 
And here are the two curves, one for your HSLA steel and one for your dual phase. Now, it does give you a little bit of a higher stress strain curve, but it is assigned a, a job to do and it does it very well. Well, the metallurgist said, okay, if we put in this carbon and the, the Martin site, what ha would happen if we can continually to build in new Martin site modules or, or diamonds or whatever the shape is? So this is a trip steel. Uh, TRIP is transformation-induced plasticity. Uh, what it says is that it needs something to change its structure as it's being formed, and that's transformation in of the structure in, while it's doing in plasticity deformation. So your TRIP steel has got a a little bit of bainite in, which is kind of a, a stronger ferrite in here. But the key is now, in addition to the martensite and the ferrite, we have retained austenite particles. And here, here, and here. And what happens when you start to deform is that these gradually will change into martensite and you build up the microstructure, so you always have some fresh martensite. And remember I said around the martensite is where the dislocation start, and this is where the generation of N values take place. So these are dead now, these become active. And this is the curve that you're going to get. Here you come up, this is the trip curve. Um, it starts not quite as good, but now it continues up and it comes here with an N of 0.25. Now, with this strength we had before, uh, that material was much lower than this. So it went from a 0.15 to a 0.25. That's about equal to vacuum de gas interstitial free mild steel, but with about a 30 KSI or more strength to it. So the main advantage of the trip is that it builds out stretchability so that, that you can have your whole stamping now starting to benefit from this better stretchability and you get a much deeper stamping, you have a much more complex stamping is available. Advanced high strength steels which I've been talking about have many, many benefits for the press shop and can make more severe stampings work. However, they are more complex. They change their properties as there's the deformation begins. And so you must have a better understanding to know how to find out what they do and how to apply them to your problems of your press shop.